with the establishment of the Dell Computer Corporation, now known as Dell Incorporated, in the 1980s, Michael Dell played a key role in the beginning of the personal computer revolution. But, of course, it paid off handsomely, as seen by his personal worth of $53.4 billion and his position as CEO of Dell Technologies, which he has held since 2007. So, today let's have a look at the documentary about Michael Dell, the founder of Dell Technologies. Without further ado, let's get into it. Early Life Michael Dell was born in Houston, Texas on February 23, 1965. His mother worked as a stockbroker and his father was an orthodontist. Both parents desired that their son pursue a profession in medicine. Dell, on the other hand, was interested in technology and business from a young age. He purchased an early Apple computer when he was 15 years old with the intention of disassembling it and learning how it functioned. In college, he began constructing computers and selling them directly to customers, focused on providing excellent customer service and offering competitive costs. Dell began saving money for his stamp collection when he was 12 years old, when he got a job washing dishes at a Chinese restaurant. A few years later, he honed his ability to sift through data in order to find new clients for Houston Post newspaper subscriptions, which paid the high school student $18,000 in a single year. Dell, who was 15 years old, when he became attracted by the growing world of computers and gadgetry, purchased an early Apple computer with the sole aim of dissecting it and understanding how it worked. Thanks to Michael Dell's passion towards computers, we now have the Dell Technologies, which is now one of the world's largest personal computer manufacturer. Dell discovered the niche that would eventually lead to his success while still in college. During this time period, Dell observed that no company had attempted to sell directly to customers due to the fact that the PC market was still in its early stages. Dell used $1,000 from his savings account to start manufacturing and selling computers to people he knew from college, cutting out the middleman and the markups in the process. This early step towards the establishment of Dell computers is the reason for Dell's current net worth of $53.4 billion. While his emphasis was not just on high-quality machinery, but also on good customer service and affordable rates, his competitors did not share this perspective. After a short period of time, he had built relationships with clients outside of school, and it wasn't long before Dell made the decision to forego education and devote his entire time and focus to his company. Quite a few numbers were revealed to be quite surprising. Dell generated $6 million in revenues in his first full year of business, which was 1984. Dell was the first person to do it. Dell was worth a billion dollars in the year 2000 and his company had offices in 34 countries and a workforce of more than 35,000 individuals at the time of the survey. The next year, Dell Computer surpassed Compaq Computer as the world's largest personal computer manufacturer. In general, Dell has proven to be one of the most lucrative companies on the planet throughout its first two decades of operation, outperforming even industry titans such as Walmart and General Electric. As a result of his success, Michael Dell released a best-selling book about it in 1999 titled Direct from Dell, Strategies that Revolutionized the Industry, which went on to becoming a best-selling book. Michael Dell feels that this deal will begin an exciting new chapter for Dell, our customers and team members, according to a Reuters news report. The company's prospects are still bleak according to several analysts who believe the corporation is facing major issues. Over the past few years, Dell has seen its share of the PC market decline as well as growing competition from tablet and smartphone manufacturers. However, According to 2021 reports, Dell has approximately 17.6% of the personal computer vendor market share, 
This is quite good because it is 1.2% higher than the 2020's 16.4%. Philanthropy Michael Dell is well known for being very private and incredibly cautious, but many who know him say that he has gradually emerged from his shell over the years, mostly as a result of his marriage to Susan, a Dallas resident whom he married in 1989 and who has helped him to do so. In addition to their four children, the couple has two stepchildren. The Dells have proven a willingness to share their good fortune by banding together to accomplish their goals. When Michael and Susan Dell got married in 1999, they started the Michael and Susan Dell Foundation, a massive private charity that has given millions of dollars to deserving projects and people around the world, including tsunami victims in Southern Asia. It made a $50 million gift to the University of Texas in 2006, according to the foundation's website. A bunch of us sitting around trying to decide what we want to have done with our money once we're dead. That's not a very sensible thought, he famously said while describing his early excursion into philanthropy. I quote, It's time to forget about everything. So, while we're still in the building, We'll take care of everything and make certain it's done appropriately. Dell resigned from his post as CEO of the company in 2004, but he retained his position as chairman of the board of directors of the corporation. He served on the foundation board of the World Economic Forum as well as the executive committee of the International Business Council, among other organizations. In addition, he served on the President of the United States Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, and he was a member of the governing board of the Indian School of Business in Hyderabad. Even more, Dell returned as CEO at the request of the board on January 31, 2007. Controversy In recent years though, not everything has gone according to plan for Dell or his corporation. Dell's poorly constructed computers resulted in the firm incurring a $300 million bill to repair the faulty machines, a significant financial setback for the company that resulted in Dell losing its dominant position in the computer industry. Dell returned to the company as CEO in 2007 in an attempt to remedy the situation, but the results have been mixed. Poor products continued to plague the company. And despite Dell Computer's efforts to downplay the problem, internal papers ultimately proved that staff were well aware of the problems affecting millions of the company's computers at the time. Dell made news in July 2010 when he agreed to pay more than $100 million in fines and penalties in order to resolve charges of accounting fraud filed by the Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC. As alleged by the accusations, Dell Computer artificially inflated its earning statements by including rebates from the semiconductor manufacturer Intel, which Dell received in exchange for agreeing not to utilize chips manufactured by advanced micro devices in its PCs and servers. Dell Computer Technology was accused of deceiving investors about its true earnings by bloating its financial statements, according to authorities. Dell declared in February 2013 that he will be taking his firm private once more in an effort to aid in the reconstruction of the company he built. His company, Dell, even secured an agreement with Silver Lake Partners, a private equity firm that specializes in technology and computer software giant Microsoft to start an acquisition of all the company's outstanding shares. This transaction is estimated to be worth between $23 billion and more than $24 billion, making it one of the most significant buyouts in recent history. Overall, there is no doubt that Michael Dell has been well compensated by Dell Technologies, and according to 2021 reports, he currently owns 52% of the corporation. So there you have it. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new videos. Until next time.